Hi everybody and welcome back to my paranormal romance urban fantasy obsession. I am Connie and I'm hoping you're going to like this. I'm going to start a new series today. Um, last week or last time I ended a series and it's taken me this long to decide what I wanted to do next. Um, this is a rather a very long series. I mean I think they're in their like their 23rd book. Um, and what I'm talking about is the Anita Blake series by Laurel K. Hamilton. And she is one of my favorite authors. Although, you know, once we get into this a little bit, I'll tell you why um, these first books were my absolute favorite. This is an om omnibus of her first three books. So I'm going to be talking about the first three books. Um, when I was collecting hardcover books and I wanted all of her books, they came out with these omnibuses. And I thought, oh my God, this is awesome because it's going to save me so much room. And when I read them, I can just read one, two, three. And I have several of these. So uh, here we go. The first book in the series is Guilty Pleasures. And I'm going to read to you what it tells us in um, on fantasticfiction.com and on Laurel's website. So the first book, like I said, is Guilty Pleasures. And I should have wrote down what year this was. Um, it's been quite a few years ago already. But here are, this is the same book, but different covers. They've had so many different covers um, amongst all of these um, this one here is the book cover for from Laurel's site this is the cover from Fantastic Fiction what I'm going to do is so, talk to you first about Laurel Laurel K. Hamilton is an excellent writer she really is uh, I don't know why my my book or my printer is printing black and white I must be out of colored ink and ink just is not in my wheelhouse right now. I have no money for ink. So this is what we get. So let me tell you about her. So Laurel K. Hamilton, she's a writer and novelist. Laurel K. Hamilton, she was born February 19th, 1963, is an American fantasy and romance writer. She is the best known as the author of two series of stories. Her New York Times best-selling uh, Anita Blake, Vampire Hunter series, centers on Anita Blake, a professional zombie raiser, vampire ex executioner, and supernatural consultant for the police, which includes novels, short story collections, and comic books. Uh, six million copies of Anita Blake's novels are in print. Her Mary Gentry series centers on Meredith Gentry, Princess of the Unseelie Court of Fairy, a private detective facing repeated assassination attempts. I'm going to do that one after this one. Uh, both fantasy series follow the, their protagonists as they gain in power and deal with the dangerous realities of worlds in which creatures of legend live. Laurel K. Hamilton was born Laurel K. Klein in Herber Springs, Arkansas, but grew up in Sims, Indiana with her grandmother, Laura, Laura Gentry. Her education includes degrees in English and biology from Marion College, now called Indiana Wesleyan University, a private evangel evangelica Christian liberal arts college in Marion, Indiana that is affiliated with the Wesleyan Church denomination. So that's all about Laurel, and this is Laurel here. All right. So let's get on with the first book. The first book is Guilty Pleasures. And what I have is, and I'm sorry about the black and white, I really am. The, this is from um, fantasticfiction.com. This is the co cover that they're showing there. This is from Laurel's website. Now, these books have gone through so many transformations through the years. They've got a lot of different covers. Of course, they have different covers for different countries and stuff too, but um, this was the, the first cover. I believe. I don't remember for sure. It's been quite a while ago, and I don't don't have my paper or my hardcovers that I first had anymore. 
I just have the omnibuses. So let's read about um, guilty pleasures. And first of all, let me tell you a little bit about Anita. Anita is, like, like it said, she is a uh, executioner, vampire executioner, that is, she is legal. That means she has to go through all the legal um, courts and everything. When she kills a vampire, she better have a good reason, or else she could uh, be in a lot of trouble, because they're considered uh, legal people now in this, in this story. And she also works for a company that raises um, zombies, or raises the dead, for like legal reasons, like for contesting wills, or um, telling who killed them, stuff like that. It's very, very interesting part of her. Um, and then she also is consultant to the police on um, matters of vampires and all things supernatural, that kind of stuff. She's a deeply religious person. She is very tiny. She's like just just over five foot, I believe. Um, but she is very capable, <laughs> as you will find out. But um, uh, my favorite part of, of these books forever is the Raising of the Dead. I, I just find that so interesting. So anyway, let's go on. And this this little snippet that I'm going to read now is from fantasticfiction.com. Introducing Anita Blank, vampire hunter extraordinaire. Most people don't even bat an eye at vampires since they've been given equal rights by the Supreme Court, but Anita knows better. She's seen their victims. A serial killer is murdering vampires, however... And now the most powerful vampire in town wants and needed to find the killer. I have a hair. There we go. Okay, and then from Laurel's website herself, it says, Ever since the Supreme Court granted the undead equal rights, most people think vampires are just ordinary folks with fangs. I know better. I've seen their victims. I carry the scars. But now a serial killer is murdering vampires, and most the most powerful bloodsucker in town wants me to find the killer. In a world where vampires, zombies, and werewolves have been declared legal citizens of the United States, Anita Blake is an animator, a profession that involves raising the dead for mourning relatives. But Anita is also known for fear as a fearsome hunter of criminal vampires, and she's often employed to investigate cases that are far too much for conventional police. But as Anita gains attention of the vampire masters of her hometown of St. Louis, she also risks revealing an intriguing secret about herself, the source of her unusual strength and power. So that is Guilty Pleasures. That is the first book in the series. Number two book is called The Laughing Course. And these books all have hidden meanings. The names of these books all have hidden, hidden meanings behind them. Guilty Pleasures is actually a vampire strip club. Male strip club. Okay, and here we go with The Laughing Corpse. Again, this is from Anita's website. This one is from Fantastic Fiction. All right. So fantastic, fantastic Fiction says, Anita Blank, van, Vampire Hunter for Animators, Inc., is offered a cool mill to raise a 283-year-old corpse. But she knows that the older the zombie, the bigger the death needed to, be ra to raise it. Only a human sacrifice is big enough to raise the old soul, and Anita's no murderer. From Laurel's uh, website herself, Anita Blake, Vampire Hunter for Animators, Inc., is offered a cool mill to raise a 283-year-old corpse. But she knows, well, okay. Anita ain't no murderer. Let's go on to that. Now, the creature from beyond the grave is tearing a swath of murder through St. Louis. And Anita will learn that there are some secrets better left buried and some people better off dead. After a few centuries, the only death big enough is a human sacrifice. I know because I'm an animator. My name is Anita Blake. 
Working for Animators Inc. is just a job, like selling insurance. But all the money in the world isn't enough for me to take on this particular job Harold Gaynor was offering. Because somebody else did, though. A rogue animator. Now he's not just raising the dead, but he's raising hell, and it's up to me to stop it. Laughing Corpse. And Laughing Corpse is another place, but do you think that I can remember where it is? It's been so long since I've read these books, but I know, you know, bits and pieces about them. I'm sorry about that. I should have read them and then talked about them, but um, I have read them all several times, but there's been hundreds of books in between. <laughs> Okay, so the last book I'm going to talk about today is Circus of the Damned. And this one's from Fantastic Fiction. This one's from Laurel's website. Okay, from Fantastic Fiction. It says, I'm Anita Blake, expert on creatures of the night. I've dined with shapes shifters, danced with werewolves, and been wooed, but not won, by Jean-Claude, the master vampire of the city. And now a darkly dangerous vampire named Alejandro has hit town. He too wants me for his human servant. A war of the undead has begun over me. I would be flattered if my, if my life weren't at stake. And stake, like vampire stake. Okay. Um, a rogue, and this is from Lauren's uh, website. A rogue vampire master, oh, sorry, a rogue master vampire hits town, and Anita gets caught in the middle of an undead turf war. Jean Claude, the master vamp of the city, wants her for his own, but his enemies have other plans. And to make matters worse, Anita takes a hit to the heart when she meets a stunningly handsome junior high school science teacher named Richard Zeman. Those two humans caught in the crossfire are so Anita thinks. Uh, when a dangerous vampire names, uh, named Alejandro hits town and claims Anita Blake, an expert on creatures of the night for his human service servant, a war of the undead breaks out and puts Blake's life at jeopardy. So, so far we've got um, Jean-Claude, which is the master of the city. He's a vampire master of the city. So he is master over all of the vampires in, in the city, plus some, I, I believe. Um, he owns Guilty Pleasures, which is, like I said, a vampire male strip club, which is pretty fun. <laughs> I mean, you're reading about it. It's pretty fun. And um, he wants Anita to be his human servant, and that means kind of like um, if she drank his blood, I believe, then she would be bound to him and she would do his bidding, I guess. Okay, then we get to Richard Zeman, which I'm not going to talk too much about him yet because it doesn't tell you in here. But uh, he is very handsome. He's He's a high school teacher. He's... He's fun. He's glorious. But Anita, um, like I said, she raises the dead for a living. She and there's a lot of fun, fun little details about that. Um, I will link those books below. So if you are at all interested, or if you've read these books, please give me your opinions. I am. I'm not terribly good about remembering details on books because, um, let's just put it this way, I've been hit in the head one too many times. <laughs> but I love to read them, so if I read these books now, it'd be like read, starting from scratch. I love, love, love these first books of Anita's. And, you know, we'll, we'll go on. As the weeks progress, I believe there's three next week that I'm going to talk to you about, too. So, I will talk to you next week. Now, please give me your comments, uh, suggestions, whatever, on these books. And I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.